ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد Uh, indeed, Ikhwan, <clears throat> as I'm sure the brothers and sisters are aware uh, that the title for our lecture is that which is related to Christmas and the celebration of Christmas uh, and something from its history and the Islamic position concerning that. Ikhwan, as far as our topic is concerned, then indeed, Ikhwan, the topic of Christmas and the celebration of these festivities, of the lights of these festivities. Uh, in order for us to understand the topic first and foremost, it is first and most that we understand one or two of the principles related to the affair of celebrating uh, festivities or joining in festivities generally. Generally, Ikhwan, there are a number of narrations uh, and a number of ahadith that indicate that the origin, Ikhwan, in relation to the celebration of a festivity that is not present within the deen of al-Islam is that the asl concerning the festivities of the non-Muslims is it is impermissible, Ikhwan, for us to resemble them and to and to join in with those festivities and with those celebrations. And that is on the basis of the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum Whosoever resembles the people, then he is from them. Uh, and our scholars have mentioned that the affair of resemblance is not that we have to be different to the kuffar in every single affair and to the non-Muslims in every single affair. Rather, it is that which is specific to their, you know, to their festivities and those things that are specific to them. Uh, those things that are specific to them, rites, rituals, that which is, uh, or that, those things that are held sacred, that return back to their religion and so on, then these um, practices, it is impermissible ikhwan, for us to resemble them uh, upon that. The Messenger of Allah he mentioned, as we said, مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ And concerning that hadith, whomsoever resembles a people, then he is from them. Concerning the hadith, the Messenger uh, in this hadith, ikhwan, established a principle for the Muslimun. Imam al-Manawi, he mentions, وقيل المعنى من تشبه بالصالحين فهو من أتباعهم يكرم كما يكرمون أو يكرم كما يكرمون ومن تشبه بالفساق يهان ويظل يعني كهم وما وضع عليه علامة الشرف أكرم وإن لم يتحقق شرفه He mentions that some of the scholars they hold that the meaning of this hadith Whosoever resembles the people, then he is from them. That it carries the meaning that whosoever resembles the salihun, whomsoever resembles the righteous, then he is from their followers. And he is ennobled as they were ennobled. And whosoever resembles the fusaq, yani the evildoers, and the wrongdoers, then he will be humiliated like them. And whosoever places uh, upon himself 
alamat al-sharaf, yani the or adorns himself with the signs of nobility, then he is ennobled, uh, even if he does not reach uh, full nobility or the nobility of the one that he he follows. But he still reaches and achieves something from nobility on the basis of his attempting to emulate people of nobility. Likewise, ikhwan, we have the statement of Imam al-San'ani who mentions وَالْحَدِيثِ دَالٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِالْفُسَّاقِ كَانَ مِنْهُمْ أَوْ بِالْكُفَّارِ أَوْ بِالْمُبْتَدِعَ فِي أَيِّ شَيْءٍ مِمَّا يَخْتَصُّونَ بِهِ مِنْ مَلْبُوسٍ أَوْ مَرْكُوبٍ أَوْ هَيْعَةٍ That is that he mentions that the hadith is indicative and it indicates uh, that the one who resembles the fusaq, yani the evildoers, that he is from them. Or with the kuffar, or with the mubtadi'a, the people of innovation, in any of the things that are specific to them. And it is this, brothers and sisters, that we need to reflect upon, for it is the, uh, yani the, the asl and the origin in regards to this principle, that is his, his statement, فِي أَيِّ شَيْءٍ مِمَّا يَخْتَصُونَ بِهِ مِنْ مَلْبُوسٍ أَوْ مَرْكُوبٍ أَوْ حَيْئًا That is, whoever resembles them in anything that is specific to them. And th- that, brothers and sisters, is the operative word. In anything that is specific to them. From uh, the malbus, from garment, from uh, marqub, from the things that they... Uh, or yeah, from the riding beasts, yeah, specific riding beasts that they may ride for special on special occasions, for example, uh, or uh, yeah, any during certain festivities or what have you, or oh, hey, uh, or the uh, f- the outer form that they have, yeah, the outer, uh, yeah, the adornments and what have you. Similarly, we have the statement of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah Taala. Shaykh al-Islam mentioned in his book, Iqtida' Sirat al-Mustaqeem, uh, in volume 1, page 237, This hadith that he mentions that this hadith, the least that could be, can be said concerning, concerning it is that it it necessitates that it is impermissible and haram to resemble the people of the book. وَإِنْ كَانَ ظَاهِرُهُ يَقْتَدِي كُفْرَ الْمُتَشَبِّهِ بِهِمْ Even if he outwardly holds that, that, that uh, they are upon kufr. And so generally, Ikhwan, the principle is that in regards to customs, customary practices, beliefs, those things that are specific to them, then it is not permissible for us to resemble them upon that. But no doubt there are certain things that we're all going to be united upon. You know, we're all, we're all it is permissible, for example, in that, you know, a person shouldn't go beyond bounds in regards to the qaida uh, and make everything impermissible. That we cannot now uh, drive Fords because kuffar drive Fords. La, that's not it, that is not the intent. Or we cannot eat cornflakes. Because the kuffar eat cornflakes. Ikhwan, the qa'ira should be understood in its correct light. And that is in those things that are specific to them. Those things that are specific to them. And that, as we mentioned, ordinarily revolves around their customary practices. Imam al Manawi he mentions, وَالتَّشَبُّهْ يَقَعَ فِي الْأُمُورِ الْقَلْبِيَّةِ مِنَ الْإِعْتِقَادَاتِ وَالْإِرَادَاتِ وَيَقَعَ فِي الْأُمُورِ الْخَارِجِيَّةِ الظَّاهِرَةِ he said that this resemblance occurs in regards to the affairs of the heart from the i'tiqadat, and from the belief and from the intents and it likewise occurs in the outer affairs from the acts of worship that one carries out and from some of the customary practices that one carries out and some of the customary practices that one carries out and it should be understood ikhwan, that it is not just uh, the kuffar that there is this uh, affair of or the prohibition against resembling them in regards to that which is specific to them but rather we find throughout the sharia a number of other categories of individuals 
or of aspects of the creation even that it is impermissible for us to resemble. From them we have that which is related, for example, to the people of Jahiliyyah, that is the people of pre-Islam, prior to the coming of the Messenger of Sallam, that there, there is and there are some texts, Ikhwan, and this is not the place to go into detail concerning that, but there are texts that indicate the impermissibility of resembling them in those things that are specific to them and their customary practices. Likewise, the shaitan, that there are a number of texts that indicate the impermissibility of resembling the shaitan. يعني لا تأكلوا بالشمال فإن الشيطان يأكل بالشمال don't eat with your left because very really the shaitan eats with his left. Don't wear one, one shoe or one slipper uh, or one sock as many of Ahlul Ilm hold uh, because indeed the shaitan wears one slipper. And other than that from the text that uh, revolve around not doing and carrying out those things that are specific to the shaitan and to, to uh, the, uh, yani, the way of the shaitan. Likewise, it is impermissible for us to resemble the Mubtadi'ah, the people of innovation. And that is something, Ikhwan, that we find uh, particularly in the statements of our Salaf and in the statements of the Sahaba, Ridwan Allahi Alayhim. So those things that have now become specific signs of the Mubtadi'ah, then uh, they are no doubt avoided by the people of Sunnah. It, for example, the wearing of a turban, no doubt, was something that was done by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when wearing a green turban with a point has now become symbolic of the Naqshbandiyya, then Ikhwan Ahlul Sunnah avoid wearing the Zay and the garments that are specific or that are now rumours or signs uh, and, and uh, yeah, any symbols of that particular type of Mubtadi'ah. Similarly, Ikhwan, there is a prohibition against us resembling or in, in the text and the Nusus of the Kitab and the Sunnah there are texts that indicate the impermissibility of, of resembling the fusaq, any the evildoers, wrongdoers, and that a person, ikhwan, stays away from resembling the path uh, and the yani, tariq of the fusaq, and that a person is not uh, branded or labeled among them. From the things that the scholars of hadith, ikhwan, used to mention in relation to the adala, of, or the, uh, the, uh, the characteristic of uprightness that is part of a narrator being trustworthy is that they say that he should be free of the, the major sins and likewise that he should be free of the khawarim al muru'a that he should be free ikhwan, of يعني, committing and carrying out major sins and the khawarim al muru'a the khawarim al muru'a are those things which are not necessarily haram but people of nobility, people of knowledge, and so on, so forth, they would not carry out those actions. Yani they, they are actions that are carried out by the fusaq and by the people of, yani, or this, by people, but sinful people. And so, ikhwan, when a particular type of garment is worn ordinarily by the sinful people, then the people of nobility avoid wearing that type of garment. When uh, a particular practice is carried out by the people of uh, fisk and, and, yani, and sin, then those practices are avoided by the people of sunnah. And that is, Ikhwan, so that the believer is distinct in regards to his character, in regards to his practice, in regards to his adat, in regards to his morals and ethics. He's, he's distinct. Uh, and he doesn't resemble those individuals that Allah Azza wa Jal may be displeased with something from their practices. Likewise, Ikhwan, even haywanat, even from the animals, there are animals that we have, or there are a hadith that indicate the impermissibility of resembling certain animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah had prohibited us, for example, from making sujood and going down on one's forearms as dogs go down. And going down on one's forearms as dogs go down. And there are many Ikhwan, Examples of uh, yani the, the uh, impermissibility of resembling particular animals when one carries out certain practices. And on the basis of that, we find some of the fatawa from and the, the verdicts from our scholars around women growing long nails. Not only does it oppose uh, the 
uh, the uh, hadith of the fitrah that the Messenger Sallam placed a period of 40 days for cutting the nails. And that the nails are not allowed to grow for longer than 40 day, a 40 day period, but likewise that it resembles uh, yeah, any, uh, animals that have yeah, any uh, claws or that have that type of uh, or lung nails that um, yeah, any are specific to those animals and should not, or that human beings should not resemble them in regards to uh, growing their nails in that manner or in that fashion. So this affair of tashbih and avoiding resembling uh, these categories of individual uh, is something that we find, brothers and sisters, repeating itself throughout uh, the Sharia and repeating itself uh, uh, throughout the text of the Kitab and the Sunnah when, when one analyzes the texts that are specific to this affair of resemblance generally. And so, when that is the case, Ikhwan, uh, uh, when it is the case that we have a number of ahadith and texts prohibiting that, I'll uh, bring you back before we enter into our topic to the statement of Imam al-Manawi, uh, that Imam al-Manawi mentions that this tashbih and this resemblance, it occurs in the affairs of the heart, the umur al-qalbiyya, the affairs related to the heart from the i'tiqadat, from the beliefs and from intents. And that is that a person carries out a particular action, and though the action may be a, reg- a normal action, when his intent was to do that which was to carry out, or that his intent was in line with the intent of the kuffar, specifically when they carry out a particular action. So though the action may be customary, as far as he's concerned, when he, when he carries it out in that manner, with that intent, then he resembles the kuffar. And that indicates then that that affair, Ikhwan, the affair of resemblance, doesn't necessitate that the action itself has to be a spe- an action that they specifically carry out. But the action may be adi, the action may be a regular action. But when the intent is to fall in line with one of their intents, that att- an intent that is specific to them, then uh, that Ikhwan is... Uh, and falls around or re- returns back to the affair of tashbih. For example, a person may be walking uh, on the or walking on or walking on the pavement, and as he you know, before he places his step or his foot, he moves it slightly to the right. Now the action in and of itself is a regular action. You know, he places his foot down, try to put in his foot down. He places it. He moves it to the right and places it in a particular place. But when we inquire concerning his intention, we find that he intended to move it slightly to the left because he didn't want to step on a crack in the pavement because stepping on cracks is bad luck. Now the irada or the intent now, though the action was a regular action, the intent uh, is an intent that falls in line Ikhwan, with a specific belief of theirs uh, that is, it is impermissible for us to believe in or for us to follow them upon. Likewise, another person walking, walking upon the street, he walks uh, as he proceeds and comes out of a shop, for example. When he leaves the shop, he steps slightly to the left and then exits. When one inquires concerning why he stepped to the left, he responds by saying that well, there was there was a ladder there, and I didn't want to walk underneath the ladder. And so here, uh, though the action was a regular action, his intent uh, falls in this affair and falls upon this affair of tashbih, he and him believing that walking on the ladders is bad luck and so on. Likewise, he mentioned wa fil umur al zahira min al ibadat wal that it falls likewise. Uh, upon you know, this affair of resemblance, it falls upon the umur al khariji and the outer actions. Uh, those outer actions that are res- related to ibadah, to worship, and likewise related to adat, related to customary practices. 
Yani the uh, ibadah, the acts of worship, uh, I'm sure that is clear that it's not permissible for us to carry out those acts of worship that uh, they would carry out and that are specific to them. As far as the acts of worship that we all, uh, that we're, we're possibly united upon, then, uh, for example, supplication, that there are a number of religions that supplicate, similar to the manner in which we supplicate. So it is not now said that we should leave making dua because there are other religions that make dua and we don't want to resemble them. La. Those things that are specific to them. Those things that are specific to them. Uh, 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 so for example, to eat uh, bread and, 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 and grape juice. Holding that way, yani, uh, or resembling them upon... Uh, eating the, the blood and the flesh of, of Jesus Christ, مثلا. and that no doubt, on top of it being uh, kufr and uh, 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 in, in, or diametrically opposed to that which we believe in, it likewise falls upon this affair of tashbih. And he mentions wal adat and in their customary practices. Uh, and uh, from those practices, Ikhwan, is a celebration of certain festivities from those celebrations, for example, the celebration of birthdays. As I'm sure you're aware, Ikhwan, uh, the Muslim does not practice celebrating and does not celebrate birthdays because of the fact that it is not something that was left by our Prophet or any of the Prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal. Neither was it a practice that was held and carried out uh, by uh, the followers of the Prophets, the righteous. Rather, we see, Ikhwan, it is something that has its origin in pagan uh, uh, practice and in pagan belief. And brothers and sisters, this is something that we need to understand that, that many of the festivities and many of the uh, forms of celebration revolve around, uh, when we analyze them, we see that the origin of those practices are practices that are found uh, or, or find their origins within paganism. Uh, and uh, that is no doubt the case, brothers and sisters, with the celebration of Christmas as we're going to go to see. Uh, and so, Ikhwan, the affair of the celebration of Christmas uh, is uh, something that returns back to, uh, well, two words, in essence, Christ and Mass. Christ and Mass. That as far as the uh, word Christ is concerned, then something that yeah, and it needs to be highlighted Ikhwan, is that Isa ibn Maryam, as you'll find uh, in the Kitab and in the Sunnah, you will never find uh, a mention of Christ. Because Isa, Ikhwan, Isa, which is, the, which is translated as Jesus, Isa, you can hear the resemblance as far as the translation is concerned, the Greek translation uh, of Isa, Jesus, but Christ, Ikhwan, it should be known that Christ, the word Christ in and of itself, it does not find its origin in the Kitab or in the Sunnah. That you will not find uh, 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 yani the origin of the word Christ in the Kitab or in the Sunnah. Rather, you will find, Ikhwan, that the word Christ uh, is one that has Greek origin. It is one that has Greek origin, and it is taken from the Greek word Christos, which carries the meaning, or the similar meaning, or is the Greek translation, if you like, of the word Al-Masih, the Messiah or the Anointed One. So the term Christ is one that doesn't find its origin in the language of Isa ibn Maryam, which was Aramaic. Aramaic, Ikhwan, the term is not an Aramaic word, rather it is one that returns back to the Greek language, and it is the Greek translation of the word Masih, yani the Messiah. And it carries the meaning, no doubt, of the Messiah. But the point that we're trying to make is that Christ is not a word, Ikhwan, and not a title that was given to Isa ibn Maryam, uh, or that, was, that he was known for, for indeed his language was not uh, the Greek language. So the term Christmas comes from the affair of Christ uh, and the word Mass. 
Uh, some differ concerning the meaning of the term mass, and some hold that it actually means death, that it's a word that carries the meaning uh, of death. Uh, so the term then, Ikhwan, Christmas, uh, is one that does not find its origin, as we mentioned, in the original language that was spoken by Isa ibn Maryam, just as uh, many of the terms that we find being used for Jesus do not find uh, his or do not find its origin in the language of Isa ibn Maryam, uh, and the term that we often t- t- uh, times hear being used concerning Isa is that in the Bible. Christians refer to Isa as Emmanuel. And you'll find that being present in a lot of Christmas hymns, that they'll use the word Emmanuel. And it should be known, Ikhwan, that the term Emmanuel is one that is used to mean God with us. And so when it is said, and when we're speaking about the celebration of Christmas, we're speaking first and foremost about a term that does not return back to the language of, of Isa ibn Maryam himself. And likewise, we're speaking about a belief that returns back to not only the celebration of what they claim or what they say is the birth of the Son of, of God and the Son of Allah, wal billah, but it is likewise the celebration of the birth of God himself. And brothers and sisters, that statement, without doubt, I'm sure, Ikhwan, uh, I don't have to explain to you the tremendous nature and the severity of the statement, that we should believe that our Creator, our Lord, our Sustainer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Azim, Al-Aziz, that he was given birth to. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Takadu Samawat, that indeed the heavens are close to splitting and being cleft asunder, and the earth is close to being split, and the mountains are close to shattering, that they should attribute to Allah a son. So not only do we have the attribution of a son to Allah and the claim that this is the day that we celebrate the birth of the son of Allah Azza wa Jal, but they say, and may Allah Azza wa Jal be far removed ikhwan, from that which they say and that which they claim, that this is likewise a celebration of the birth of Emmanuel, the birth of God with us. And so ikhwan, the uh, celebration of such an affair is some, something that no Muslim in his right mind can condone. That no Muslim in his right mind can condone the belief or accept Ikhwan, the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was born and that we should somehow be happy and join in with such a celebration. And it is for that reason that we find our scholars mentioning that it is kufr to congratulate uh, or to uh, yeah, and he, uh, join in with the salutations for the lights of Christmas, Happy Christmas and so on. Because that would be to say, no, that would be to congratulate them or to say that indeed may you enjoy your celebration of the birth of, of God. Al-Iyadu Billah. Concerning that we have the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala Ibn al-Qayyim ikhwani mentions in Ahkamu Ahl al-Dhimma, volume 1, page 205, that congratulating the kuffar for, symbolic, for symbols specific to kuffar is unanimously prohibited, such as saying to them blessed festival, or happy holiday, or the likes. A person who says this ranges between committing an act of utter kuffar or great prohibition. His action is equivalent to congratulating them for prostrating to the crucifix. And this sin is more severe and hated by Allah than congratulating someone for drinking alcohol, committing murder, committing adultery, and so on. And many of those 
who do not have a true regard for the deen indulge in such acts, not realizing the ugliness of what they do. And a person who congratulates others for a sin, a bid'ah, or an act of disbelief would be liable to Allah's abhorrence and Allah's wrath, and yani Allah's anger. Similarly, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen uh, has a fatwa ikhwan where he mentions that it is impermissible to congratulate uh, or to join in with such salutations, uh, saying, Ikhwan, that it is prohibited, just as Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimullah Ta'ala, has mentioned. And that is, you know, without disrespect to them in any way, without dis- dishonoring them in any way, but that it is uh, something that returns back to the very core of Muslim belief and opposes the very core of our belief, Ikhwan, that Allah Azza wa Jal, or that we should believe that Allah is born, or that we should congratulate someone uh, for celebrating the birth of Allah Azza wa Jal, or the birth of one that is uh, attributed to Allah as a son. And when, when none of those affairs could possibly have occurred, then Ikhwan, uh, our congratulating one upon that is nothing but folly. What should be said though, ayyuh al-Ikhwan, is that the celebration of the date of to the 25th of December is not something, Ikhwan, that returns back to anything established upon Isa ibn Maryam concerning his birth. Because what is the haqq in relation to the birth of Isa ibn Maryam is that we don't actually have a date uh, when Isa ibn Maryam was born. Though some historians, uh, that is Christian historians, return the affair in actuality back to somewhere in the region of uh, 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 autumn time. Yani as according to some of the biblical scripture, that some biblical stri- scripture would indicate that he was born around the autumn time. But the, the most that can be said is that that is just a very, very broad approximation. But what is definitely the case is that he was not born uh, in or upon uh, the 25th of December or anywhere near uh, the uh, end of the year. So what has to be asked then is where in actuality did this, this celebration come from and where did this period come from? What should be known, Ikhwan, is that when many of the Christian nations around the globe, whether it be in the uh, European world or outside of the European world, when they in their origin, Ikhwan, were people of paganism, we see, and when we study the ways and the paths of, of paganism and the various uh, 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 practices or pagan practices and the various pagan denominations, you'll find Ikhwan, that they are united generally in certain practices. And there are certain things that they carry out that you'll find them, even though they believe in, uh, in, 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 in gods that differ one from another, you'll find them practicing and carrying out certain practices uh, and sharing in uh, uh, doing similar things. And thus, as it relates to this affair of the 25th of December, then it should be known, Ikhwan, that the 25th of December is a date that has been placed for the celebration of many um, uh, pagan festivals, or or many of the pagan festivals worshipping various pagan gods. That it was something, Ikhwan, that was, or it was a date that was placed for uh, a pagan festival that was practiced by the ancient Persians when they would worship various gods like Baal and others. Uh, similarly, Ikhwan, it is uh, a, a period that was laid down uh, for the uh, for the pe- or for the place known as Dionysus, which is in Greece, uh, and the uh, worship uh, of some of the Greek gods, uh, like Attis and others. And similarly, uh, it was a period that was uh, placed down and was claimed to be the time that the god Mithras, uh, who was a Persian god, that he was born. And and it, it, it likewise should be highlighted that in all of these these uh, pagan religions, it is always said that it is the time of the birth of something. 
this period of the 25th was a well-known date that was used to, to signify the birth uh, of whether it be their gods or uh, whether it be uh, in the ancient Roman festival uh, which was known as Satur uh, Saturn Saturnalia. Saturnalia, Ikhwan, was a, a pagan Roman festival. During Saturnalia, they used to uh, carry out uh, wild acts of debauchery. This um, uh, yeah, practice was something that took place at the exact same time, Ikhwan, the 25th of December. And during that time, Ikhwan, the practices were so terrible that they would practice, yeah, and it would be drunkenness, debauchery, uh, and they uh, would carry out all types of acts of lewdness, homosexuality, and it would likewise, Ikhwan, tie in with another practice or another festival of, festival of theirs known as juvenalia. And during juvenalia, children used to drink and get drunk and likewise uh, join in with the sexual malpractice of the adults uh, while they were in a drunken state. Yani the children themselves uh, would join, join in that uh, because of the fact that this, this uh, festivity known as Juvenalia would tie in with uh, Saturnalia which was in honor of their god, their pagan god Saturn. And so that would begin, Ikhwan, from the middle of December, this festivity, Saturnalia. It would begin from the middle of December, and it would, conti would continue until the 1st of January, ordinarily. And on the 25th of December, they would say that the 25th was the birth of the unconquerable sun. Because what they would say was that the days which got shorter and shorter, the, the further down into the winter we got. And then from the 25th of December, and, the, and that, which was, that which comes after it, they used to believe, the days began to get longer. And so they would say that that then is the time, or the beginning of the time, that the sun would regain its dominance. And so during this period of the sun regaining its dominance, uh, they would say uh, that on the 25th of December, bivapt, or with that, it, it precisely, precisely, they would say that the uh, 25th was the day that the unconquerable sun was born again. And that is, it began to regain its, com it, its dominance and the days would continue to get longer and longer from the 25th of December uh, and that which comes after that. And so, Ikhwan, they would celebrate that as the birth of the unconquerable sun, or the unconquered sun, uh, and it was a practice that continued uh, up until up until the coming, Ikhwan, of Isa ibn Maryam. And after Isa ibn Maryam, uh, when, because Ikhwan, Isa ibn Maryam did not come, uh, and he was not sent for all and sundry. Isa ibn Maryam was sent for the Yahud. And he was, uh, as occurs in the Bible, and likewise occurs in the Quran. But even biblically, we have uh, a statement that they, and you know, every Christian will accept, that I was not sent except to the last sheep of the tribe of Israel, or the, of the children of Israel. That I was not sent except to the last sheep of the children of Israel. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, وَرَسُولًا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ and I was sent as a messenger to Bani Israel. And I have come to you with signs from my Lord. And so, Isa ibn Maryam was not sent ikhwan, to all and sundry. Rather, he was sent specifically to Bani Israel. Which is the difference between, or one of the differences between Isa ibn Maryam and our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Messenger والسلام, was sent to all of mankind and likewise to the ins and the jinn. To mankind and the jinn. While Isa ibn Maryam ikhwan, was sent to Bani Israel. He was sent to Bani Israel. Uh, and uh, him being sent to Bani Israel ikhwan, indicates that he was not for the Gentiles or not for the non Jews. <clears throat> but after uh, somewhere in the region of 
uh, 60 or 70 AD with the coming of Paul. When Paul, who was a Jew, who was originally named, who was, who was originally known as Saul, who claimed while he was traveling to Damascus that he saw Isa ibn Maryam in a dream. After being a man that used to kill Christians and used to kill the followers of Isa, he saw, he claimed he saw Isa ibn Maryam in a dream, in a vision, and that Isa commanded him to be uh, a Christian and that he commanded him with a number of rulings that were not in the Injil. And so it was Paul, somewhere in the region of 65, after the uh, ascent of Isa ibn Maryam, uh, that it was Paul who began to preach that the doctrine had changed slightly, that one didn't have to circumcise, that uh, the uh, drinking of wine was permissible in moderation, that you could eat pork, uh, and other than that from uh, the affairs. Similar, Ikhwan, uh, to uh, the affair of the bid'ah creeping in to our ummah, and creeping in uh, to the Muslim one uh, at the hands of some of the Yahud who innovated Shi'ism and so on, uh, and attributed to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah that which was not present within it. But the point is, Ikhwan, that Saul was from those who began to claim that non-Jews could now become Christian, even though Isa was sent to the Yahud. Now, Paul began to claim that non-Jews could now become Christian. It was after that that non-Jews began to take on board Christianity and began to follow Christianity on the basis of this, this new opening that Paul claimed was given to him by way of this vision that he saw of Jesus that allowed him now to call to the Jew and the Gentile. And so there and after Ikhwan we saw uh, that non-Jews began to enter into the fold uh, of, or began to follow or become followers of Isa ibn Maryam uh, and the uh, spectrum was broadened as it relates to those who uh, began to follow Isa ibn Maryam and what was seen was that, that was, there was a large number of non-Jews who had entered into Christianity those non-Jews Ikhwan came with a number of practices and that initially Ikhwan, those practices Christian priests and heads of Christendom tried their utmost to nullify and to uh, abolish the practice and the uh, uh, celebration of certain of their pagan festivities from them the pagan celebration of Saturnalia but regardless of their attempts they were unable to stop the spread and the practice of the celebration of Saturnalia even among those people who had become Christian. And so what the high priest of Christendom saw was that instead of trying to abolish Saturnalia and instead of trying to do away with it in completion as, as it was a pagan custom, they saw that it would make more sense because we were trying hard to get them to stop it to no avail. So they saw that it would make more sense instead of abolishing it that then they made the decision to tame that celebration and to make it into a, or turn it into a celebration uh, wherein uh, they would celebrate the honor of the Christian uh, Son of God, yani Isa, Isa ibn Maryam, as, as far as they were concerned. Uh, and so, Ikhwan, it was originally the practice of Saturnalia that was adopted into Christianity because of the fact that the pagans who had become Christian were not able to do away with the practice of Saturnalia. And so, uh, it became, and they changed it slightly and tweaked it to become the uh, a festivity and a period wherein one honors the uh, Son of God, and it was yeah, and it established on that basis. It then became uh, the birth date 
of Isa ibn Maryam that eventually became the case just as it was similarly the celebration of the birth of the new son and uh, just as it was a celebration of the birth of other pagan gods among other peoples so it seemed good then uh, uh, for it to be deemed the birthday of the uh, son of God as far as they were concerned uh, and it then became the celebration of the birth of Isa, uh, Jesus, the son of Mary. And thus, Ikhwan, the 25th of December began to be celebrated with practices that likewise came from their pagan, uh, the, the original pagan practices. And so, just as during the Roman times they would practice homosexuality and cross-dressing and yani, debauchery, even slaves didn't have to work and slaves were free to have sexual relations with whomsoever they chose that on that day it was nothing but drunkenness and, and yani, orgies and the likes and during those periods, Ikhwan, uh, and because of the fact that they were acquainted with that during Saturnalia, some of that was adopted into the practice of Christianity, though it was toned down, but it was adopted into the practice uh, of uh, yani Christianity. And so the Celtic pagans, for example, when they would practice Christianity during uh, the same period, uh, they saw, Ikhwan, that there were certain plants that they would use during these practices of debauchery and, and uh, lewdness. They would use certain plants that they held to be symbols of fertility. And so, for example, uh, they would use holly, mistletoe, and these were plants that were seen by the pagan Celtics of, of the British Isles uh, to be uh, symbols of fertility. And so they continued to use that. And so this custom of kissing under the mistletoe uh, during Christmas uh, was one ikhwan that revolved around this pagan custom uh, and this pagan festivity that was filled with sexual, yani, sexual malpractice and what have you. But it was toned down. And in our time, yani, now we have kissing under the mistletoe, but it's still uh, that kissing, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, develops into more than just kissing. But the uh, origin of the practice was uh, that it was a practice among the pagans who were present on the British Isles, because prior to Christianity coming to England, uh, um, I believe somewhere in the region of about 55 BC, uh, that uh, the uh, British Isles were filled with pagans. We had various types of pagans, uh, many of them being Celtic pa pagans living on these shores. And to the, to the extent that uh, Caesar, the Caesar, when they sent armies uh, to the shores, they found, Ikhwan, that when the Roman armies came to the shores of Britain, that they were met by the shores being lined, or the yani, the British shores being lined with uh, rows and ranks of Druids. And Druids, Ikhwan, were, yani, were wizard-type characters that used to daub their faces with a blue paint, and they would uh, have long, disheveled hair and wear long gowns, and the women... And the men, they would carry out certain practices, yeah, and he, returning back to sorcery uh, and magic. And the, in, in one of the diaries of one of the, sea, the Caesar that came to the shore, that he said that verily, and that was Julius Caesar, that he said verily when our armies came to the shore, they were met by druids, the women of which began to scream and wave and shake their hair and their heads frantically. And the men began to gesture as though supplicating. And the armies, the Roman armies, prior to actually arriving at the shores, began to find themselves having wounds and cuts and lacerations. Wounds and cuts and lacerations on the basis of this uh, sorcery that was being carried out by uh, the Druids, the pagan Druids that they found when they came to the shores of Britain. And so these Celtic Druids, Ikhwan, from their beliefs was that there were certain plants like mistletoe 
uh, certain plants like holly that were symbols of fertility, pagan symbols of fertility that they would put and decorate over their homes, over their altars. And so this was likewise incorporated into the uh, practice uh, of Christianity. Uh, this was incorporated into the practice of Christianity, of uh, uh, Christmas, of one. Uh, likewise, Ikhwan, from the things that were incorporated into the celebration uh, of Christmas uh, was uh, the burning of the Yule Lug. And the Yule Lug, Ikhwan, was again returned, it used to return back to this pagan practice uh, of the worship and the veneration of vegetation uh, and of fire. It returned back to the worship and the veneration of ter- certain types of vegetation and of fire. And so, uh, this lug that is ordinarily burnt, the u- what is known as the Yule lug, and now the only manifestation of it is uh, is pos- probably the Cadbury's Yule chocolate Yule lug cake. <laughs> uh, other than that, Ikhwan, we don't really hear much about the Yule Lug, but it was a practice that was uh, carried out during Christmas that the um, the uh, that the those who used to celebrate Christmas would burn a, a, a lug, and that was known as the Yule Tide Lug, and that again returned back to a, a, a pagan practice, which was in actuality done, as we said, in worship of vegetation and likewise worshipping fire, and it is associated with magic and with spiritual powers. Similarly, Ikhwan, from the affairs that are related, that were incorporated from this paganism, is uh, the uh, belief uh, in or in that which is uh, related, Ikhwan, to the utilization, or rather a practice, that is the affair of drunken, drunk, yani, drunken, and alcoholism during uh, the celebration. But during the celebration, Ikhwan, it was well known that they would take intoxicants, uh, and those intoxicants were used uh, during the practice of the festivity, uh, and it was on the basis of that that, as we mentioned, even children had, were involved in that and got drunk and were involved in the various types of lewdness that they would uh, involve themselves in. Likewise, Ikhwan, from the affairs related to Christmas is, uh, and yani, a talk about Christmas cannot uh, be uh, carried out without mentioning him, and that is Father Christmas. <laughs> Father Christmas, Ikhwan, uh, is a character that is in actuality based uh, on, as historians mentioned, based on a true character uh, that was known as St. Nicholas. A true character that was known as St. Nicholas that uh, was uh, an individual. He was known to be a, Christ, uh, a Christian leader uh, in an area known as Myra, which is modern-day Turkey. Uh, and uh, he is, <clears throat> his name was originally Nicholas. His name was originally Nicholas, uh, and he lived in the 4th century uh, AD, and after or Christian era. Christian era. Uh, this Nicholas, who became Saint Nicholas, uh, he was known to be a very shy individual, and was known to be a person of piety and a person of uh, righteousness, and was always uh, willing and, and wanted to aid and support the poor. And so it was said about him, there is a story that is narrated about him, that he climbed onto the roof of the house in his attempt to help a poor family. He climbed onto the roof of a house and dropped a purse of money down uh, its chimney. And that that money landed in a stocking uh, that a girl had put by the fire to dry. And so on the basis of this, we have the development of Father Christmas uh, 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 being a character, and this is probably where the white beard comes from, that he was known to be a character of an individual that was righteous and upright, and possibly had a beard, uh, and so this belief in Father Christmas uh, being uh, uh, a, a, a symbol of Christmas returns back to uh, this affair or this uh, occurrence. And the, t- the term 
uh, Santa Claus comes from the Dutch term Santa Claus, or Santa Claus, which was a word that was used for Saint Nicholas. And so Santa Claus, having its origin in this Saint Nicholas, uh, who was this character, Allah knows basically whether the story of his existence uh, is ex established or not, but that is what is mentioned by some of the historians. Similarly, from the affairs related to Christmas is that which follows Christmas Day, and that is uh, the uh, uh, following year, the 26th of December, which is known as Boxing Day. Uh, the term Boxing Day, or this um, day being referred to as Boxing Day, it came about somewhere in the Middle Ages, maybe some 800 or so years ago, when some of the churches would open their arms boxes or their sadaqa boxes, uh, and people would place within them gifts of money and so on. Uh, and that, that, that money and that sadaqa would be given on Christmas Day. It would be given by Christians on Christmas Day, and it would be placed in these arms boxes or in these sadaqa boxes. And so these sadaqa boxes on the day after Christmas would be taken to the poor people of the neighborhood and would be distributed upon them after Christmas. Uh, and it is for that reason that the day is referred to as Boxing Day. That is the day that the charity boxes were emptied and distributed or the contents of which were distributed upon uh, the poor people of those regions and of those neighborhood and in, in those neighborhoods. So we analyze it when we see when we look into the whole of the practice of Christmas, we see that it is uh, a period and a time uh, that returns back to uh, a pagan festival, a festival Ikhwan, that not only was it not connected to uh, the, um, the the way of Isa ibn Maryam, but it is likewise something that it, it diametrically opposes what is even in the Bible. Another one of the issues related to Christmas, for example, and this is an example of how it opposes what Christians are supposed to actually believe in, is that which is related, for example, to Christmas trees. And I'm going to quote uh, to you, Ikhwan, this verse from the Bible, and we're going to round up, Ikhwan, uh, and he, the, this short kelima around the topic. But there is a, a passage, Ikhwan, in the uh, book of Jeremiah, verse, uh, or Jeremiah 10, verse 2 to 5. And listen, Ikhwan, to this verse in the Bible to let you know, Ikhwan, how a people diametrically oppose what is even in their books on the basis of hawa, on the basis of, of desire, on the basis of yeah, and he following that Ikhwan which finds its origin in paganism and not being able to abandon pagan practice. Listen to this verse, Ikhwan. Uh, the chapter reads, Thus says the Lord. <coughs> Thus says the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. And the heathens, Ikhwan, are the pagans. The heathens are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman, with an axe. They then, then deck it with silver and with gold. And they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it does not move. And they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. And so here we have Ikhwan subhanallah, a verse that clearly dispraises the pagan practice of having a Christmas tree. Yeah, and in that the customs of the people are in vain, the verse mentions. For one of them cuts a tree out of the forest, the works of the hands of the workman with his axe, and then he adorns it with silver and gold, 
and they fasten it with nails. And so the verses, Ikhwan, displays even the very practice that is, that is symbolic of Christmas. We find the Bible itself is diamet diametrically opposed to such practices. <clears throat> so, Ikhwan, uh, with that being said, we say then, Ikhwan, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed uh, the Muslimun with basira and with nur min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal has mentioned, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. And this day have I perfected for you your religion, and I've completed my favors upon you, and I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. Islam. A deed, Ikhwan, that is kamil, complete. And we have no need, Ikhwan, to incorporate or adapt the pagan practices of any uh, yani group uh, of individual. Likewise, we have the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks a deen other than Islam, then it will not be accepted from him. And he in the hereafter, he will be from among the losers. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the insight and the foresight to see and to understand that Allah has blessed us, Ikhwan, with khayr and with nobility, with nur ala nur, with light upon light, and it is nothing except for us to turn to it, to study it, to understand it, to make ittiba of it, and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he causes us to die upon it. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين